Hello everyone, David Bradan here from oblogtowatch.com and today I'm here in Paris with Chopard and Chronometry Ferdinand Berthou. Uh, we are with uh, Mr. Carl Friedrich Scheifele, uh, who is going to explain to us some of the details of uh, the new brand first and then we're going to talk a little bit about his plans for the future of Chopard and in closing we are going to touch a little bit on uh, the issues of the watch industry as a whole. Mr. Scheifele, thank you very much for your time and uh, I would like to kindly ask you to introduce yourself to those who may uh, not be entirely familiar with your position in a history and history. Thank you. Uh, I'm Karl Friedrich Schäufele, uh, co-president of the Chopin Group and um, also uh, president of Ferdinand Bertou now, which is uh, a new brand that we are uh, launching today here in Paris. Excellent. So to begin, we should really speak about the new brand first, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, could you please tell us a little bit about how you stumbled upon this heritage? What made you wish to continue the heritage? And also, last but not least, how you plan on fitting this under the Chopard brand umbrella? Well, basically, uh, when I arrived in uh, 20 years ago or so in Fleurier to, to set up uh, Chopard Manufacture, which is the, uh, uh, the company where we uh, produce our move our own movements, particularly those for uh, the NUC collection. Um, I didn't expect really to uh, stumble across Bertou, but uh, in fact, a few years later, while I was setting up a, a watch and clock museum, um, I came across the Bertou, uh, beautiful Bertou piece, uh, which I I wanted to integrate into our collection and. Uh, well, it happened that I, I was uh, successful and I could uh, buy, buy the auction. And, but also it evoked my, my uh, interest in, 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 in Bertou and his, his watchmaking career, which I found out to be uh, uh, quite amazing. In particular, uh, there was a fact that he was born in, uh, in a place close by Fleurier, um, and uh, ended up uh, at a very young age in Paris, became a uh, um, master watchmaker at only 25, although he was not French. Uh, then became watchmaker to the King of France, uh, Louis XV, and success subsequently Louis XVI, and even uh, um, he received the Légion d'honneur from Napoleon. Mm. So he survived the revolution, and his most, uh, probably his biggest achievement were, however, the, uh, the very precise um, chronometers, uh, ship chronometers for navigation. And uh, this story really fascinated me to the point where I, I wanted to, uh, I was thinking of, uh, you know, relaunching this name. Now, I, I found out uh, doing some research that somebody had. Uh, uh, owned the rights to the name, and that was in 2005. I uh, decided to contact the person, and we 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 got along well. And he he was uh, actually he was happy to hear that I was going to hmm. to uh, possibly do something with uh, with the name. So I we purchased the name, but then uh, it was Chopin's to uh, 150th anniversary, and uh, many other things to do. And um, and I was not really sure yet how to tackle the uh, project. So three four years later, uh, I finally got around to to really uh, start thinking about uh, Bertou. And uh, well, basically the result uh, is what you see today. Because um, of course you're co-president of Chopard, and and it's linked to Chopard in some ways. Yes. Could you tell a little bit as, uh, to us about how it's going to fit into the Chopard group? Well, basically, uh, you know, we have, there are other groups which uh, own several names, several brands, and, and uh, so this this is not really anything anything new. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Um, in our case, uh, Bertou um, is is going to take a, 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 a small niche. Uh, it's going to be a niche brand. It's not going to be. Uh, uh, 
very important production and it's going to be exclusive, rare. Uh, you will find it at uh, maybe eight or ten uh, retailers around the world. So it's, it's basically um, going to be also the pyramid of uh, watchmaking art at, at, in the Chopin Group. And it's, it also is a showcase to, to, to show what kind of know-how we, we have in our group today. And, um, but at the same time, it, it's not a, a, in competition with, for example, the LUC collection, which uh, has a quite a different, uh, follows quite a different strategy. Uh, when you will discover the product, you will understand uh, that the, the Bertou, uh, the construction of a Bertou movement is um, in no way, um, is in no way a family link to uh, to other uh, Chopin movements, yes. in, in particular the LUC movements. It, it's a world apart, and um, this is the way it, it will fit into the uh, into the group. So it is a comp yeah, I understand that it is a uh, world apart. So it's going to be manufactured in some ways in the LUC um, workshops, so to speak, but with different mm -hmm. people with different components. There is a there is a, a small crew uh, of uh, presently five people who are working in the in the pair to manufacturing and also uh, sales and marketing, but um, the components uh, uh, and research and development. Um, has so far been been done in house in the uh, Chopin manufacture, yeah, right. and as we as we develop, we will we will uh, integrate uh, some more elements into the the Bertu team, but uh, simply we would not have been capable of doing what we are showing today uh, if we would not have had uh, the luck to. Right. To uh, tap into the the Chopin group um, know-how and um, savoir-faire and so on. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it basically it also proves uh, all the know-how that was at hand and that and that you could tap into yes. to create something that's uh, what I understand is mm. completely new. So the, so the movements are new; they're not shared in no, construction. There are no, there are no the shared others. components. There are no mm -hmm. shared uh, parts. It's mm -hmm. really. Uh, an entirely new construction and uh, another philosophy of construction. It's, it, it's really reminiscent of the uh, marine chronometer uh, movements, but they are obviously reduced to a, to a wristwatch size. And uh, we added a number of uh, features which uh, which are contemporary. We, we, we also use some titanium, we use uh, some material which is uh, obviously uh, today. So it's, it's, a, it's a great synergy between a great watchmaking tradition and uh, a techno technology which is available today. I see. Wow, that sounds really exciting. We will yeah. look at the new watches in a separate hands on video. So I believe mm -hmm. it's best for us to. We want to the next question uh, that I would like to ask you today, yes. which concerns uh, not the new brand because again we are going to look at that in a, in a separate video, but Chopard as a whole. Mm -hmm. So Chopard is completely independent, uh, and I would like to ask what your plans are for the manufacturer uh, as a whole in Chopard, and if you're planning on supplying movements or parts to someone else or. Well, we are we are uh, enjoying a pretty. Uh, Big independence today in terms of um, vertically integrated production, truly, uh, uh, and more and more so also in the, on the movement side with uh, our Fleury et Bosch workshop, which uh, is uh, concerned about the uh, industrial produced movements, um, and of course MUC with the, uh, the high high class orological movements. Um, now this independence obviously has a price. Uh, we, as a family company, we continue to invest in, in our production facilities over the over the many years, and um, today we are 
in the position to to have a situation where we we are large enough as a group to 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 be well represented worldwide to have a, a number of our own uh, retail outlets and so we are well positioned i would say uh, as a family group to in in a very competitive environment i see so speaking about the brands you would like uh, or other plans for the future you will you are planning on keeping it this way i don't if i understand correctly we definitely want to keep it this way. We definitely want to further uh, enhance our network in terms of distribution. We still have further further growth possibilities in, in certain areas, certain parts of the world, but also certain collections. And not to forget, we are also uh, a jeweler. And uh, in today's world, um, Branded jewelry is also a very interesting field, um, and we happen to to master both uh, both uh, components. I see. Well, that's uh, really exciting, and we are looking forward to seeing Shopart continue as an independent manufacturer because I think that's really unique position for one to be. Thank in. you. Thank you. And um, in closing, I think we should we should really just we went from Ferdinand Berthu, which is a new brand. Mm. We then discussed Chopard a little bit, and now I would like to ask mm. your opinion a little bit about the um, the watch industry as a whole. So, seeing the global economic situations nowadays, how do you see the foreseeable future of the industry as a whole, and what what do you expect to see in the future? Well, if we industry? want to speak in watchmaking terms, but yes. you could say. 2015 is a complicated year, um, but but this being said, I think the um, watchmaking uh, is a very Swiss uh, activity. Um, is probably one of the least heard activity in Switzerland due to the strength of the Swiss franc. Uh, but of course, it the fact that. Uh, the euro was so much devaluated and uh, the subsequent currency fluctuations that we, we went through and, and, and price adjustments we had to make, I mean, this, the whole industry had to make, um, it really became a, a complicated situation. Now altogether, if you look at the latest figures, end of August, the uh, watch uh, exports, which are which the Swiss Watch Federation publishes, are minus two percent. Now I think uh, minus two percent you can still consider to be um, only a reasonable uh, decline uh, in in an environment which uh, is uh, also somewhat economical, politically unstable. Um, I think the watch industry as a whole still has. Um, an interesting future, um, but in the short term, uh, in the immediate moment and shorter term, um, I, there is not much visibility as to certain markets and some important markets as well. Um, but all in all, I remain, you know, confident that uh, the Swiss watch industry will master this uh, this period, this difficult period. We have had some others before. <laughs> that is true. Well, uh, I think that it's an excellent closing line right there. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Thank you. Frederick, and uh, hope to see you again yes. very soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.